I'm failing as a content creator. And to me, that's okay. Because I am not the cookie cutter content creator that cares about their status as a content creator or the reputation with certain brands or being known to work with only the most premium name brands or whatever that's recognizable and everything like that. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with those content creators. Hey, get the money, get the bag, do what you wanna do. But like I've said multiple times on this channel, I feel like when you start being like that, you get away from the whole purpose of doing product reviews or doing content creation in general. It's not supposed to be, oh, I want to work with these brands, so I'm gonna be a product reviewer or a popular content creator just because I wanna work with these brands. The whole point of being a content creator, at least what we consider a content creator nowadays, is providing some form of entertainment to a viewer because we're in the entertainment industry. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole point. It's like, what's the point of making a movie? So viewers can watch it. It's not to let's make a movie to make money. And we've seen what happens in the entertainment industry when you're just making movies for the sake of making money versus when you're trying to make a movie for the sake of entertainment. There's there's a stark difference, I would say, in my personal opinion. It's like, it's like night and day. And we see, like I said, the various levels of success on both sides of the same coin. And when it comes to content creation, I feel like most people, like I said, are straying away from being entertainment as far as when it comes to streamers or just other types of content creation, when those content creators focus on just trying to get as many views subscribers followers you know stuff like that they try to be brand safe or they do stuff or whatever that's going to get them popular that's going to get them viral because that's all they care about instead of when content creation was first fostering and stuff people it was crazy to see the views and the followers and the subs and stuff like that but most people were doing it out of hey i want to entertain people i want to express myself I want to be true to myself or wherever it, in, I would say certain regards, you know what I'm saying? Obviously you don't want to do anything illegal, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? But certain things that within the, I would say reasonable means. And when it comes to me, that's the kind of content I wanted to do. I wanted to provide entertainment to people. So when I started doing content creation in like 2015, like streaming, playing video games, uploading that stuff, whatever, doing that stuff, I didn't care about the views. I didn't care about becoming know partnered on whatever streaming platform you know making a whole bunch of money and stuff like that it would have been nice back then because i needed the extra income because i couldn't work but now that i'm officially 100 percent disabled i get a disability check and it's enough for my wife not having to work i'm taking care of my family you know what i'm saying so this hobby i don't need to work with the bigger brands and get paid for my work the reason why I keep mentioning getting paid for work or wherever nowadays is for the simple fact of I'm putting in so much time and effort that I feasibly don't have for this hobby and brands are not respectable enough of that. And they ask for the most, some of them, not all of them, but some of them ask for the most when it comes to wanting you to do a video. There's so many companies that I left on red that I just disagreed with and decided not to do a video with them or work with the brand or something like that, you know, turned them down, whatever, because they were asking for me to go through links like these other cookie cutter content creators who are making shorts. And the if you ever really know the difficulty behind making a actual successful short, not even something that went viral or anything like that, just one that's going to be successful for a brand or, you know, advertisement, whatever you want to call it, how much work, how much editing, how much, you know, hitting the perfect shots, doing all that stuff, how much time, hours, you know, spent everything or whatever behind it, just for a brand not to pay you is absolutely ridiculous to me that people out there end up on like on whatever social media platform is accepting deals like that regardless of what brand is offering the product or offering to collab. It's absolutely just crazy to me that the company is okay with it and doing it and don't feel any kind of guilty or, sh or shame. And then the content creator is just like, yeah, I'll do it. Like, I understand there's a passion, there's a drive, like you just don't care. But after doing content creation for so long and purchasing all these products and being limited on time, 
I don't see the benefit of it. And on top of that, it's more from a, a respect standpoint that you're going to pay me for my work, not necessarily because I need the funds. For me, I can go out and buy right now like three, four Sure SM7Bs. But what I've done is buy the Sure MV7X, the Movo VSM5, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I love this microphone. This is something I haven't talked about that much on the channel, but this is my favorite, I would say, condenser microphone, like, uh, cardioid microphone or whatever non-dynamic microphone i use the fine fine microphones and stuff like that or any other cheap microphone because i don't need sure sm7b's you know what i'm saying i don't need the roadcasters and, and the mackie dlz creator series like i want those things because of the professional audio and stuff like that but me as the type of content creator i am and stuff even though i can purchase those things I don't really have too much of a justification for getting into that kind of professional realm of things because this is just a hobby and i would like those things and like i said i'm still considering getting like a mackie dlz creator or like a road or wherever just to be able to not have issues that i have with audio but like even when i got all my cameras i could have got me like three or four fx30s or probably like three fx3s and I'm talking about like full frame cameras with like zoom lenses, not even prime lenses. I'm talking about zoom lenses, lenses with low apertures. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that, the, the really expensive, like stuff that you would use for Netflix documentaries, you know, stuff like that. I could have got like three or four of that setup and been perfectly fine. I did it though. I went with the Sony ZV E10 Mark one, the alpha 6700 and like the Sony ZV one, because there was no reason to I was being a smart consumer because I don't need that stuff. And like I said, I don't need this to be a job. I don't need the kind of income that other content creators are chasing. And that doesn't taint me as a content creator. And I'm not saying that every single content creator out there is like that. There's a lot of them, you know, that are making content like I'm making or whatever, but they're taking it that serious as far as I need the best of the best or whatever, because I'm trying to bring value to the content. So they'll over edit, you know, they'll make their every single video like high quality production value that you would see on television or like a movie or something like that for, you know, products, reviews and all that stuff. And they're not getting paid from the companies. They're just, you know, that's the type of content they like to make. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that there's not people out there like that. I'm talking about the vast majority of people within the gaming and streaming realm. They only really care about the views. They don't really care about going viral. They only really care about what product or what thing or whatever is going to get me a certain amount of views so I can make a certain amount of money so I can pay my bills and stuff like that. They don't really care about the viewer or the potential consumer of whatever product they're covering or whatever. And I understand like that's that's what they're trying to do the job they're trying to get their bills paid and stuff like that but like i said i think that we're losing the authenticity and just being yourself you know what i'm saying like when people say like oh you only act that way on camera you know what i'm saying you only talk that way on camera you know you have your on camera personality versus off camera you're not really your yourself 100 percent on camera me personally i've always said i'm like 99 percent to like 95% myself on camera. And recently I uploaded a video talking about like my comment section on my discussion videos and stuff like that. And I was just a hundred percent myself in that video. And if a lot of brands had seen that video and I'll link it in the description, if any brand wants to see it, I cussed like that in a say like a sailor, I was just full on doing how I am. If you met me in person. I would just be in a hundred percent myself. That might be jarring for certain viewers, certain people unsubscribed and stuff like that. They were like, how could you, you know, be like this on camera or wherever it was very jarring for some people, especially new subscribers and stuff. And to me, that's perfectly fine because my content is not for everybody. It doesn't matter to me. Like I said, in that video, if everybody from my channel unsubscribes, and only one person watches my stuff or I had zero subscribers, but you know, one person watched my video wherever on whatever product and stuff. That's fine for me because this is a hobby. I'm not trying to reach a hundred thousand subscribers. I'm not trying to reach a million subscribers. I don't care about that stuff. I'm doing something as a hobby. If somebody wants to watch it and they gain something from it or something like that, if it's informational, that's why I say at the end of the videos, if it was informational, helpful, leave a like, share it, consider subscribing, doing all that stuff because 
if there's somebody out there who can potentially gain something from it like you did, why not help them out? You know what I'm saying? It's not for my benefit. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't say it in the beginning. Every now and then I might have like a graphic pop up saying subscribe. But to me, there's no reason for me to do that stuff because to me, I already understand with my years of being in the military, like I've talked about and being a civilian for so long and stuff like that and being a mentally disabled, like 100 percent mentally disabled veteran. And what I mean by that is I have PTSD. I have bipolar type two. I have sleep apnea. I have sleep paralysis. I sleep with a sleep hat machine. I have an overuse muscle I, in my left shoulder. I have headaches or migraines or whatever that happen all the time. Even right now, I have a migraine. I took some pills before I started, uh, before I started recording. I probably have to take some more. Like it was so bad that I used to be on nervous system dampeners. And one of them was so bad that I had an adverse reaction that I got so angry that I literally passed out. Like I literally fainted because the medicine was trying to uh, cut off my anger or whatever, like the chemicals and stuff like that to the brain and everything. And apparently I was too infuriated. The medicine couldn't keep up something like that that was explained to me. And they don't know why I passed out. They did scans. They did, you know, all the stuff or whatever in the hospital because I got brought into the hospital. And to this day, they still don't know what happened to me, but I can't no longer be on the the, that type of medicine nervous system dampeners and stuff like that to stop anger because they don't know what's happening because that's how infuriated i get when my ptsd is triggered and if my bipolar is on a high or something like that or on a low what ends up happening when i'm on the lowest point or the highest point the peaks of both you know types of you know ups and downs with bipolar type 2 if i get angry my body gets exhausted once my anger has subsided. And what ends up happening is that I become a vegetable. I am literally exhausted. You know, if you ever had adrenaline pumping or you've been working out for a long time, how, how sore your body feels the next morning and stuff like that. Like you can't move, you can't walk. You're extremely exhausted, tired or wherever. You can't really sleep, all that stuff. That's what happens to me after I get angry. And I can be angry for a long time my body just the chemical imbalance and stuff like that my body just comes completely just useless i'm just like i said a vegetable just sitting there that's why it's not that's why i'm 100 percent disabled that's why i can't go out in public and stuff that's why i can't i have to limit my human interaction because there's no telling what might trigger me to go off in the deep end but in that discussion video most people will say well you were pretty angry i wasn't even really angry i was a little bit upset based on the topic and stuff that we were talking about, but I wasn't full on actually angry. And if you watch that video, you might think that's crazy to me, like crazy to you. You might think that was absolutely like off the deep end, but I wasn't. You, you see what I'm saying? I'm trying to set up the actual notion of, okay, now you can understand fully where I'm coming from. So when IX Tech, and again, I have to apologize to him formally, when they told me, when I did my audio mixer video, whatever, comparing uh, their audio mixer to the Fine Fine SC3, they told me that my tone of the video, whatever, and the title, which made sense, and I had, I had apologized to them personally about the title, but they said the tone of the video and the way I described it against the Fine Fine SC3 audio mixer was like I was trying to discredit the actual company and I was trying to persuade people to not purchase the IX Tech audio mixer. And I was trying to be uh, like a voting for the, like the, the competitor's product and telling people to get that one over that one, over the IX Tech one and stuff like that. And I rewatched the video twice. And obviously while editing and stuff like that, I already knew the information obviously because I edited the video. And I completely to this day even still disagree with them for the simple fact of when I was doing the video and even going back and watching it several times, I said saying nothing but praises about their product. I said it was way better than the Fine Fine SC3 multiple times throughout the video. I said that the only thing that stopped me from recommending it, and again, it was my personal opinion and I'm entitled to that, regardless if a company sends me out a product or not, I still have to give my honest opinion. And because of the device having hot preamps or too, uh, I'll say too loud of a preamp and potentially being the model that I had, um, 
I could not recommend it over to Find Find SE3, at least what I had in person available to me. But from the visuals and the extra features that you get with the iX Tech One over to Find Find One, I would recommend the iX Tech over to Find Find One. If, if it's just my model, if it was just my model's preamps and stuff, if that was just the case, then I said 100% all day, recommend the, the uh, iX Tech audio mixer over to Fine Find SC3 audio mixer. Apparently that wasn't listened to or something, I, I don't know. But I think what I 100% agree with them on and what they brought to my attention was if I was having problems with the product and the actual preamps or whatever, I should have contacted the company and got a replacement model and then did my video. And in my personal opinion, even if that I did that course of action, I still would have told my viewers or, or potential consumers that, hey, there was a model that was sent out to me, had some bad preamps or wherever. So I just reached back out to them. They sent me a new one or wherever. I would make that clear in my video. So if anybody in the future had run into something like that, they could do that in the future or wherever as well. Because statistically speaking, when somebody orders a product and it's a cheap budget one like this around 50, 60 bucks or something like that, and they're ordering off Amazon, whatever it is, they get it in, it doesn't work. They're not gonna contact a company or ask for, a, 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 I would say a replacement nine times out of 10 they're going to just send it back and go out and purchase something else if it's a more expensive product then they might try to get a uh might try to reach out to the company and get a replacement depending on how necessary it is for whatever they're trying to do you know what i'm saying but statistically speaking like i said more often than not people just return the product and they go with another company or they go with something else entirely that's just that's just the truth Regardless of what you want to say about it, that's literally the truth. There's no arguing with that. That's just statistically the truth, what people have been doing since the, the dawn of time. You know what I'm saying? And where I messed up, and like I said, where I need to apologize, and I don't have a problem where I, I'm wrong and admitting that I'm wrong, is that I need to apologize to the company because we have worked before in the past together, and I failed as a content creator and working with a brand and stuff like that, not reaching out to the brand and asking questions and doing what I'm doing. My excuse, if you want to put it that way, for the tone of the video and how everything was done was the fact of I had already been sick for a couple of days. If you guys know about the low profile boom arm video and the microphone, I said my son had got sick and I was potentially gonna sick. And when I did that video, I was sick and I'm still recovering. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. That's that's why I changed the microphone or whatever. So hopefully it's not as annoying because I noticed with the IS Tech audio mixer, it was kind of annoying me or whatever the way I was sounding. But that's why my tone was like that. It was because I was already irritated because I don't have that much time to do these types of videos. I don't have that much time to do product videos because before in the past, when I first started doing my content creation or wherever, as far as like product reviews, I used to take eight to nine to 10 hours a day to film, edit, you know, shoot B-roll, do all that stuff because I can't write a script because of my aforementioned, you know, uh, I would say mental illnesses because I have a chemical imbalance in my brain. So I can't write a script. If you've been watching me and actually looking at me, I barely look at the camera lens. I have gotten so many comments of people telling me, hey, pro tip, look straight into the camera. Stop looking away and stuff like that because people like it when people look at straight into the camera. Nine times out of 10 people do that because they're reading a, a teleprompter and stuff like that. I can't do that because I physically can't. That's what, that's what I'm trying to tell people. I am not your cookie cutter content creator. I'm not looking into teleprompters, writing scripts and stuff like that. I physically cannot because of my chemical imbalance in my brain doesn't allow me to stare like in one place too long because visually in order for me to be comfortable enough to be on camera, I have to visualize somebody standing in front of me versus a camera because if I don't do that, I would never be able to be on camera as a streamer or, you know, a content creator who's doing videos like that. So just to, to flip the switch in my brain to be able to do that, it's hard enough. Not to mention, like I said, in the past, I'm telling you, three, four days of 
you know, nine, 10, 12 hours or whatever of doing videos because I had to sleep on it and then come back and re record some stuff, looking at my editing software or whatever, coming back and, re and mind you, back then I used to record everything in my living room studio. So I would have to grab everything that I needed to come back in here and then be like, well, I messed up on this part. I messed up on that part. Go back out there, set up all the lights and stuff, the camera, everything. At least now I'm at this desk and I can just stop recording and put headphones on and just listen to it and then come back over here if I needed to add anything. Now it's a little bit, uh, I would say easier and I'm recording in OBS. I don't have to worry about ejecting SD cards and, you know, putting through an SD card reader, doing all that stuff, wherever I simplified a lot of my workflow just because I don't have that time anymore. I have almost a two year old at home. You know what I'm saying? I have a wife and stuff. I have other bills and everything that complicates my life to the point to where this is, like I said, still a hobby. I barely get four hours to do this stuff right now. It's about almost four o'clock in the morning. I literally have to go watch my son for 12 hours at five. The last two days, I've been up almost 24 hours because we have a new car trouble or wherever. And I was supposed to have appointments or wherever to, to go to a physical therapist and a chiropractor for my over muscle, overuse muscle in my left shoulder and stuff. And I have appointment. Like, I don't think companies that I've worked with really understand what I'm going through and the links that I go through to push out these review videos. A lot of them, not saying IX Tech or Onsbot, you know, in particular, and I'll get to the apology for Onsbot in a second, but I don't think a lot of them, especially like the super like no name brands that I have worked with and done videos on, understand the links that I have to go through to do videos that they're not paying me for, like at all. I, d I don't think that they understand and I don't think that they appreciate how much I have to do as far as making a decent thumbnail, coming up with titles and tags to get some of my videos to do well. And that's why some of them have you know, asked multiple times to work with me later on. That's why Mayano, even though, you know, I've said what I've said about the company, don't like them. They still to this day are emailing me because of what I had to do to get some of those videos to even do well on YouTube as far as algorithm and stuff goes. But like I said, I don't really care about the algorithm. I don't really care about making, you know, the tags and the titles and all that stuff like that. I find joy in like shooting product B-roll. That's like m where I enjoy the most as far as doing this whole content creation or whatever is being a little bit more fascinated with trying to take pictures and stuff like that and get better at that stuff. And I, I completely, I am trash with that. The thumbnails have been completely garbo. My Instagram posts have been completely garbo, but it's something that I'm still just having fun with. You know what I'm saying? That's where I guess my creativity lies or wherever, as far as like me being a creative person, even though I'm bad at it. And like, I'm just learning about like false colors on like a film monitor. So hopefully I'm hoping that this looks a little bit better as far as like what I have been doing previously in videos. Cause I had a company send out a film monitor and stuff like that. And this one's pretty cool with false colors and everything. So it's like with me trying to learn all this stuff and like I said, only having that limit and mind you, I still want to stream. I still want to play video games. I still want to just be myself and a person or wherever. And when companies are sending out products and they expected me to do all this stuff, it's just kind of crazy to me that when I ask for a payment or, or, or ask that the video and stuff is getting paid, they're like, we're not paying you. Why, why do you think that you need to get paid for all this work that you're going to do? And then some of them get upset when I give a negative review or I say some cons about their product. Like they act like their product is the best thing since sliced bread or everything that's man made is not perfect. And it's like, you're a budget company making budget products. There are going to be some things that I personally don't like. Why is that not okay? And that's what bothers me about doing these reviews with certain companies. That's why some of them I have never worked with before, or some of them I just worked with once and that's it. Because a lot of them, like I said, have a problem when they release a product and they ask you to cover it and you do, and you say something negative in the video and they're like, oh, how dare you? And it's like, if you knew how my mental worked and how I was mentally or wherever, you would think I was like unhinged. And like I said multiple times before, I've been locked up in a mental institution because that's how crazy I am or unstable I am. 
And like I mentioned with the nervous system dampeners, as far as the medicine goes, I do have a lot of medical problems and issues. You know what I'm saying? But that should not, that should not garner sympathy from a company. And I'm not asking for that or whatever. I'm asking for people to understand the position that I'm coming from, that I'm just not a normal human being. You're not going to get the normal, say, type of content from me. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be able to pull the wool over my eyes, expecting me to do all this random stuff or wherever and not get paid for. It. You know what I'm saying? And some there's been content lately that, that the companies have been getting more and more desperate for me to do different types of videos. Like I've had companies reach out to me that you normally would see for a sponsored spot in a video, asking me to do tutorials for plugins and stuff like DaVinci Resolve or, you know, um, I would say plugins for analytics for YouTube and stuff like that and put it in my product review videos and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, is this a sponsored spot? Is like, am I going to get paid for this? Like what, 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 what is this going? And they're like, no, we just want you to use it. Talk about the product for a video. That's not in the realm of what type of products, like what type of content I do. And then for two, that's like a sponsored segment video, like, you know, 30 second, you know, 10 second sponsored spot, like in this within a video, that's what somebody would get paid for to advertise within you know, like a different type of video, like a product review. And you're not willing to pay me for it, for my time and effort for me to learn how to use the product and make a tutorial and do all this stuff or wherever and be like doing an advertisement and you're not willing to pay. And I was just like, you know what? I left them on red and stuff so many times because they're getting so desperate. They want people to do stuff. And they think because I'm a smaller channel with, you know, smaller subscribers, but my videos get a decent amount of views. Most of them anyway, they think that they can just get me to do stuff for free. And that's the problem that I have. And that's why when it comes to Onsbot, I told them that they're not going to see the video before it goes live. And I made a misstep there. So I have to apologize to Onsbot and their representatives and stuff because they asked to, to see the video before it goes live. I didn't know until after the video went live and they re-emailed me back after watching the video and apologized. But they told me the reason why they were letting they wanted to see the video before it goes live was because the people that they sent the products out to there was apparently a ton of content creators who were giving misinformation or specs or whatever within their videos and they were trying to make sure that all the content creators were putting out the correct information my thing is about that is that they should have told me that when i told them why do you need to see the video before it goes live? I normally don't let people do that or whatever. And I told them throughout the whole process, even up to the point to where I told them, hey, the video will go live on this Monday at this time, you know, at this date and stuff like that. So, you know, when everybody else sees it, they will see it as well. And they kept asking and asking and asking up until the day of release to see the video before it go live. And to the point to where I just stopped emailing them back because I just got tired of it. And it's like, if they would have just told me the reason, like, hey, we want to see the video before it goes live because and there was never the because there was never the comma. There was never, hey, the reason why we want to see this is because, you know, people are putting the wrong information out there. So I was thinking uh, they, they were checking it for technical specs was just a cover up to seeing the video before it goes live and giving some kind of input, even though they said they weren't going to do that. I've worked with so many brands, you know what I'm saying? And that was only the second time I've worked with Onsbot, you know what I'm saying? And between working with Onsbot the first time and the second time, I've worked with so many brands that try to manipulate the video and seeing other people's frustrations with the same type of uh, tactics from companies. So to me, it's like, I don't know these people personally. I'm just emailing them, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know if they have any kind of intentions or whatever. And people say, oh, you know, trust companies, trust content creators, you know, don't have your guard up or whatever. Not everybody has an evil intention and stuff like that. But it's like, when you're different than normal people and you are different from normal content creators and you have mental issues, these are the stuff that you run into. You're gonna think that people have nefarious intentions behind what they're saying, especially since they didn't really give me the detail on why they were hounding me so much to see the video before it goes live you know what i'm saying so now looking back or wherever it's like yeah 
I probably should have told them how I felt about it or asked them just blatantly, like, why is this so important to you? And they probably would have told me that there was other content creators out there who was given falsified information and they were just doing a quality check, you know what I'm saying, to make sure. But to me, it, even when a brand is trying to do that, it's like, do you watch my videos? Do you watch my product reviews? Because I never really go into the, the the details. I don't go into details when it comes to microphones, as far as like the the frequency response, looking at waveforms and stuff like that, doing the scientific and mathematical stuff. Like for for instance, the the rapid trigger keyboards that I'm getting into recently and everything like that. I don't go into the scan rate, the pulling rate, you know, pulling up graphs and stuff, doing uh, high speed cameras to see, you know the reaction time when you press down the key and you lift off the key and stuff like that. I, I don't like with webcams. I don't go into like the color space and, and all that stuff with cameras. I don't go into, you know, too much detail and depth. I just be like, hey, plug in the microphone, test it, use it, give my thoughts and opinions. You know what I'm saying? Like it's very dumbed down. I would say reviews as far as what a person typically will do if they went out and purchased the microphone. They're just gonna purchase it, they're gonna plug it in, they're gonna yell into it or wherever, it'd be like, hmm, I like the sound with it, my voice, okay, I will use it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the approach to most of my stuff that I do when it comes to product reviews. And companies would get that if they would just watch my videos. You, you know what I'm saying? But typically they don't, they'll say they watched your channel or they seen your video or something like that. And it's more so they seen the videos analytics or performance. They didn't actually watch the videos themselves. So when it comes to, you know, Onsbot telling me like, hey, we watched your video. We're, we're sorry that we have set, accept you and stuff like that. I just left that, that email on red and I'm going to email this video, you know, to Onsbot, to IX Tech and potentially other companies in the future, ones that want to work with me because I want to set a precedent or set come some kind of standard for companies to understand that when you want to work with me, me in particular, I'm not like every other content creator out there. I am not going to just accept what the company wants or dictates to me like, hey, we want to work with you. Okay. What product do you want to send out and stuff like that? We want you to cover this product. We'll send you a link so you can take a look at it. And then we want to see the video before it goes live. We want you to talk about these features, leave this uh, promo code and leave this link and do all this stuff or whatever. And I'm like, so pretty much you just want to make the video yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to have it so structured or whatever and not let the creative, the content creator do the video however they want to do it. And you don't want to pay them. To me, that's like, you know, doing commercial work like i would say like you would see on television or something like that and nobody who did that tv show that you like so much got paid you know what i'm saying they were all doing it for free you know what i'm saying and i'm not saying that i'm on that level of other content creators who are pretty much turning you know reviews or product reviews or whatever they're doing into almost like a movie experience you know what i'm saying or something that you would see on the big screen or something like that or on netflix or something i'm not saying i'm on that level but like I said, between the mental issues, between the headaches, the, 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 the shoulder, the frustrations of learning a product, using, using a product, the time that it takes to shoot the B roll, the time that it takes away from me sleeping because doing content creation, like I said, I have three or four hour, hours of doing content creation. That's me not getting sleep. And I already have sleep problems and stuff like that. Like I said, I might get four to five hours of sleep per day if I'm lucky. If I don't get you know, the sleep paralysis or I don't wake up after an hour of sleeping and can't go back to sleep because of my sleep apnea, you know what I'm saying? Or insomnia and all that stuff. Like I don't think companies and it's not just me and I'm not trying to be like a whoa, just me. I really urge companies that work with content creators to take a really deep reflection on how they work with content creators, how they approach them and really think about like the smaller content creators and stuff 
especially ones that you know are not making any money from doing like they're not paying them and stuff like that and they're not making money from content creation not the ones that are super successful and i know they got their own problems and stuff like that more money more problems i, I get it but i'm talking about the ones that still have like a nine to five because i'm super lucky not having a nine to five but people who have like family kids who you know they're trying to push and rush to put out videos and stuff like that and those people don't really have the time for it they're kind of like in the same boat as me but they have a job they have you know wife kids you know or significant other kids they have other obligations outside of content creation and they're just telling them hey we want the video to be like this they're trying to control it and stuff see it before it goes live all that stuff i think that a lot of companies are losing respect for the smaller content creators they see the value in smaller content creators. More and more companies are trying to get smaller content creators because they've seen that their analytics, their viewership, all that stuff is a closer community, is more authentic, so they can influence better than the people who are just vastly way superior in like analytics and numbers and stuff like that. So they 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 understand the diamond in the rough. Like they they understand the little nuggets that are out there that they can you know cherry pick and and do all that stuff. But I don't think that they understand that even just like the big content creators, people have various personalities, they have various issues and problems so when it comes to, you know, mental issues, stuff they're dealing with IRL, you know what I'm saying? Some stuff that they're just not as transparent as I am when it comes to, you know, doing this stuff. Like I'll be a little bit more transparent. Um, my son has been showing signs of autism, you know what I'm saying? Early autism or some what being on the spectrum and stuff like that. And it doesn't run in my wife's family or my family. You know what I'm saying? So just been dealing with that. And if you guys haven't noticed, I haven't really been giving updates on my my son's health like I did in the beginning of when he was born and stuff like that, as far as like talking about how he's been doing with milk and how he's been eating and all that stuff or whatever. And I don't tell companies really about this unless, you know, there's something that's interrupts me like doing a product review or stuff like that and even with ix tech and i was trying to push out those videos that was on me trying to put those videos out back to back to back to back because i didn't even really tell him that my son was sick i was sick or wherever and i'm trying to do stuff and like all this stuff like i don't tell companies you know all this stuff about my mental issue all that stuff because it's like if they want to know more about me they will watch my videos they will watch my channel and stuff but realistically look at realistically looking back companies are not going to do that you know what i'm saying the marketing representatives are not going to do that because they're trying to cut they're trying to cast a wide net or wherever as far as working with a lot of content creators to get their products pushed out there rather than cherry picking a few and paying those content creators to talk about the products and what's most upsetting is some companies they will cherry pick certain content creators and they will pay them and then at the same time they'll come out and try to reach to me and be like hey we're not gonna pay you like we paid this other guy but we want the same kind of quality content like similar and you know what i'm saying like and i've said before i'm not on the level of those people but they're still getting paid for their work you know what i'm saying and with me it's more probably a struggle for me to do my stuff than them because they're not only getting paid from the company but they're also getting paid as a content creator and it's like that's their thing so they're okay to sit there for eight hours nine hours ten hours that day and work on something me I, I i don't have time for that you know what i'm saying like i'm blessed enough that my wife is willing to put up with me you know doing this for three or four hours you know what i'm saying and allowing me to do it and then go watch my son for 12 hours and you know put up with me being as tired and not really fully functional especially like if something happens with me mentally and my body like i said just turns into a vegetable and stuff like that like again i'm not trying to make it woe is me i'm not trying to come up with some excuse why you know i'm failing as a content creator and why i need to apologize to companies and stuff and i again i want the companies to know that i'm being sincere it might not come across that way because again chemical imbalance i don't want them to that's why i've recorded it so many times i've had an hour plus version go on i've had one that i recorded for 30 minutes this one's probably reaching almost an hour and it's like i want to stress that when it comes to me being a content creator and me just being me i'm always gonna put forth my me you know what i'm saying i'm always gonna just be me i'm not gonna cover up my thoughts and opinions I'm not going to do it just because I'm a content creator or wherever, or I'm worried about my reputation with the brand and stuff like that. 
but I will admit when I did something wrong and I did something wrong. And regardless if it's because it's a brand or if it was an actual person, you know what I'm saying? I still think that regardless of either way, if you are a human being and you have done something wrong, you need to admit that you did something wrong. I'm not above that. You know what I'm saying? Even when I have my own personal feelings and my own mental issues and stuff like that, I can respect that not everybody is going to understand me. So when somebody tells me, hey, you're toning that video or how you acting or this, that and the third or wherever was unpleasant, they don't like it, whatever. I can understand that. <laughs> And I can hear my son crying in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Um, hopefully, like I said, Onsbot, Ice Tech, or any other company I've worked with in the past and stuff like that um, gets the general sentiment behind what I'm saying. And like I said, I do apologize. It's just, it's how I am mentally and everything like that. And like I said, it's my mistake for not doing my due diligence. Like I tell other people that they should be doing their due diligence. But like I said, I make mistakes too, just like everybody else. I'm human. I have flaws, just like everybody else, just like everything that's man-made. I'm not perfect. And I don't have a problem with addressing it. So, and I would like to say for people who are thinking like I'm just doing it for the company, all this stuff, wherever, the companies didn't ask me to do a, a public apology. Nobody asked me to do it. I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. Like, and if you don't believe me, I, I don't know what to tell you. But I think that, like I said, me coming out and talking about it at least it would be a little bit more believable that i try to be as transparent as legally possible and i would say not only legally but just what makes sense you know what i'm saying within my realm of responsibility uh, that's not going off way off to the deep end because like i said i would never make a video when i'm that angry or that upset you know what i'm saying you might catch me on the live stream being like that but not in a video because like I said, I don't want it to be too jarring for people because like I said, when it comes to me and my mental issues, I understand that not everybody's gonna get it. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a random person who clicks on a video and be like, whoa, what the fuck is wrong with this person? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm cussing now, but let me get in and get out of here because again, I don't want people to, yeah. With that being said, y'all take care, have a squid task today. And honestly, I am sorry, I make mistakes. It's not going to be the last one. Wasn't even the first one with doing content creation. But I think as a content creator, it's important to address it. And there you go. That being said, y'all take care. Have a squid day. God bless you and yours. Deuces, everybody. Much love.